Ladies and gentlemen, welcome everyone. I am Dr. Roland A. Drolet, PhD in Biomedical Engineering from the University of Toronto, 1971. I am the developer and inventor of the Rumart PEM system that has helped over one million people all over the world who were suffering from all kinds of health problems. Today I am with uh, my son, François Drolet, gold medalist, Olympic gold medalist in uh, Nagano, Japan, in short track speed skating. With this uh, B4 clip, uh, we have a couple of cheats we want to go through and I'm going to explain this uh, to you very simply and uh, you could ask a few questions whenever uh, uh, we stop. So this is about atmospheric gas pollution and how atomic and molecular velocities affect what is in the air. Okay, Because uh, uh, in... Um, gases in uh, perfect gas theory that we're going to see in a few minutes, uh, we have little equation that define the macroscopic temperature in Kelvin degree degrees, which is centigrade degrees plus 273, or zero Kelvin is minus 273 centigrade, okay? So actually, the more the temperature is risen, the faster the molecule goes. Just like little, uh, not billiard ball, ball, because billiard, billiard balls are much too heavy, but let's say like a, almost like a, a balloon bubbles, like bubbles, that uh, atoms are like bubbles. And they heat, they hit each other Elastically, they almost don't take, don't lose energy because it, it comes back with their energy. So this is the basis of assumption of with um, statistical physics that allow us simply to calculate the average speed of air molecule or molecules in the air, whether it's oxygen, nitrogen or other molecules like H2O vapor, to calculate the velocity of these atoms and molecules as a function of Kelvin temperature, Boltzmann constant, we'll see its value later on, and the atomic mass or molecular mass. So the heavier is the atom or molecule, the slower it will go, okay? because uh, that's the way it is, okay? And, and um, so these are probable velocity, average velocity, root main square for the main square root of velocity, okay? In, we are talking of billions of molecules in the air. We'll see in the next page how many molecules there are in 22.5 or 22.4 liters of gas at uh, no more pressure and temperature, which is 20 centigrade degrees, there are 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 wow. atoms or molecules in this quantity of gas. And in, uh, let's say, um, 12 gram of carbon, for instance, which is called an atom gram because the molecular weight of carbon 12 is uh, is 12 12 proton uh, mass so uh, when we have a, uh, when we have a, a mass of carbon like this we we have that means we have 12 times the mass of the proton okay and um, uh, so in a, uh, let's say, uh, 12 gram of uh, carbon, of this carbon-12 uh, 
atom, we call it an atom gram because okay. it's the atomic weight in, in, uh, in the quantity of atoms. We call it atom gram. But in an one atom gram of carbon or another metal or molecule uh, or a solid, there is exactly the same number as there are atoms or molecule in 24, uh, 22.4 liters. Okay? Yes. So this is uh, how we can calculate in a piece of metal how many atoms there are there. Okay. And from that, and knowing the dimension of the atom, you can, can, you can calculate its compactness. So there are all kinds of little things that from macro, uh, macroscopic measurement, you can calculate wonderful things. And they, because atoms are like the little balls of a proton with a electron turning around. But the electrons are going so fast that uh, um, the different atoms cannot penetrate in each other. Okay. So, but they can exchange electrons and they can bind together either, for instance, in covalent bond when they share an electron, okay? But in uh, what we call ionic bond, okay? Then these bonds are weaker okay. than uh, because the, there are atoms that have, let's say, w just one electron on the last shell. So they can live without it, so to speak. Okay. And the other one is missing one, but somehow uh, when they have sh uh, sent one or they gain one, the, the shell is complete. So it, it's still a, uh, a link, but a weak link compared to O2 or H2, okay? Yeah. So coming back to what we have here, suppose we have uh, water, the atomic uh, weight of water, H2O, H is one proton, so H2 is two atomic weight, O is 16. So atomic weight of H2O is just 18 times the mass of the proton. But when you have, for instance, sodium chloride, table salt or sea salt, then the molecular weight of this is 23 for sodium, 35.45 for chlorine. So that means that this molecule has a molecular weight of 58 proton mass. So it's a heavy mass and it doesn't move fast enough to get in the air okay. like H2O does. Mm -hmm. And like O2 is staying in the air. O2 is just 32, okay? But uh, what uh, I want you to realize is that this is simple concept from classical mechanics and statistical mechanics. But if we want to understand what happened with, uh, uh, in the atmosphere with the pollution, we have to consider the rays coming from the sun, like UV rays that okay. can create ozone and the chemistry of some of these molecules. For instance, NH3 plus H2O, okay, um, in water, um, a certain volume of water can absorb uh, something like 1,000 of its volume of NH3. So there, there are some uh, affinity between molecules that uh, uh, surpasses what we would think if we Yes. They didn't consider the chemistry of these bounds. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, show you the uh, perfect gas equation I talked about generally, but this is very simple. This is called the perfect gas law, and Avogadro and Boseman constant that I mentioned. Okay. They have specific value measured experimentally, but the perfect gas law is what explains what happens in, in, a, uh, in a car motor, for instance, okay? If uh, you light up the air with uh, gasoline, okay, then you have an impulse of volume 
sudden impulse of volume. And the temperature doesn't have the time to increase that much, so you have an impulse of pressure. Okay. okay? So that's what transmits the uh, energy in the gas, the chemical energy, into mechanical energy. And okay. energy, remember that energy cannot uh, disappear. It, can, it only can be transformed. Okay. in heat or in, in something else, okay? So, this simple equation, pressure times volume divided by temperature, is always a constant in perfect gas, uh, depending, of course, on the number of moles, okay, uh, of gas, and the gas time constant. And if you send the temperature in Kelvin on the other side, you see that the product of pressure by the volume is an energy which is dependent on temperature. Okay? okay. So that's why when temperature increases, you get molecules that go faster and faster. Like this little equation for the uh, probable average and RMS speed. Mm -hmm. It's because of this equation. When temperature increases, pressure increases, and all these little bubbles like uh, molecules or atoms, they are always hitting each other in elastic collision, more or less. And we say elastic collision because this theory applies so perfectly to experiment that uh, we know that our theory is right, you know. But, uh, of course, when the, the pressure is not too high, because if the pressure is much too high, then the volume of the atoms which are not compressible easily as compared to air, to molecules in air. It's almost full of nothing. It's almost empty, yeah. okay? But when the atoms are stuck together, like in a metal or liquid, it's very hard to, uh, to uh, condense more because the molecule an atom touches, okay? okay? So, uh, so then when the pressure is very high, we really need to take into account the actual volume of all the atoms there, and not okay. only the volume of air, let's say. Okay. So here we have the value of the, the number of uh, uh, atoms or molecules in a, a mole or in an atom gram, it's 6.02 times to the power 23 atom or molecule, let's say in 22.4 liter of any gas. Okay. This is the number of atom or molecule. Or in one, um, one, what we call one atom gram, for instance, of carbon-12, if it would be carbon-14, which is radioactive, then it would be 14 grams of carbon-14 you have any atoms in this little quantity that you can weigh. So that gives you a sense of going from macroscopic to atomic level. Mm -hmm. Because the size of the atom is pretty well stable. It doesn't change much with temperature. Because temperature is motion of the molecules and atoms. It doesn't change the size of the atoms. So that's yeah. interesting to, yeah. to uh, okay? So uh, this is about it. I don't know if you have uh, some question about this, about the Boltzmann constant there. This is the atomic uh, gas constant. R is the macroscopic gas constant, R, but Kb, the Boltzmann gas constant, is the macroscopic gas constant divided by the number of atoms in a mole. So you have 8.31, the, the gas constant, which is the product of the two, divided by Na, Avogadro number, okay? Uh, 10 minus 23 because it's taken up. And you get the value of the atomic uh, Boltzmann constant, which is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joule per atom per degree. Okay. And this is good for perfect gas. This is good for perfect gas at a, a temperature for which the the pressure 
is not extremely high because when the pressure is very high, for instance, um, you have to take into account the size of the molecule. And also, if the temperature is decreased to a certain point, then the gas will become solid. I see? So that's where we have, uh, uh, when this happens, when a solid becomes a liquid, this is what we call a phonon frequency, the vibration of these uh, atoms. When it vibrates to a certain uh, temperature, uh, when it gets too fast, the solid breaks and becomes a liquid. Okay. And if it goes still faster, it becomes a gas. Okay. okay? So that's uh, what we call a phase shift in uh, uh, engineering or chemical engineering. Okay, is that uh, yeah. understandable? Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Thank That's you. a little clip to uh, show that uh, we may not be perfect gases, but we know that uh, when we have too much pressure in our uh, gastric uh, places, uh, we get this equation uh, working. And it makes what you know. Okay, so take care, have a good day, and smile. So, that's the end of this clip. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it. And please, keep smiling till the next clip.